Hello everyone. This is the machine learning crash course introduction. In the crash course, we'll be going over the supervised learning, deep learning, unsupervised learning, recommendations, and finally ranking. Generally, for supervised learning, we are going to require two things. One, the data, and two, the labels. Imagine you are a real estate agent and want a way to quickly estimate a house's potential selling price. Supervised learning can help. Here is some mock sales data over time along with the labels, selling price. This data can be used to train a supervised learning model to predict housing prices. The model would learn from the features of houses such as square footage, bedrooms, bathrooms, etc. and their corresponding selling prices. Once trained, the model could be used to predict the selling price of a new house based on its features. Now, actual selling price is the real recorded selling price of previously sold houses, which we'll use to train our model. Let's take a house sold in March 2023. We gather all its characteristics and neighborhood features. This is our data. Its recorded selling price becomes our label. We repeat this for hundreds, ideally thousands of houses sold across various neighborhoods and time periods. We feed these data or label pairs into a supervised learning algorithm perhaps a linear regression or a more sophisticated model like a random forest, which I will talk about in detail in the next video. But basically it starts identifying patterns, maybe houses with more bedrooms in areas with good schools and tend to command higher prices. After training, we have a model. We can now input the details of a new house currently on the market and the model predicts a likely selling price range. Now in supervised learning, choosing the right label is crucial because it directly guides what the model is trained to predict. In the housing price example, we choose price as the label, which is ideal for this scenario. The label determines what the model is ultimately trying to learn and predict. In our case, we want to predict the selling price of a house. Choosing square footage wouldn't make sense as the model wouldn't be able to estimate the entire house value based solely on the size. A well-chosen label leads to a model that aligns with our goals. If we use a label like large or small to describe house size instead of square footage, the model predictions would likely be inaccurate for real world purposes. The label should be compatible with the type of prediction you want to make. In our case, price is a numerical value, which aligns with our goal of predicting continuous value, which is selling price. The label should provide a practical information for your use case. Predicting expensive or cheap might be subjective and not very useful for tasks like real estate appraisals. Ideally, you should have enough data points with clear labels to train the model effectively. If certain labels are difficult or expensive to obtain, it might be best to choose a more attainable alternative. So by carefully considering these three factors, you can choose a label that sets your supervised learning model up for success. But what if we don't have neatly structured data like we do in this example? Well, then we can use something called deep learning, a branch of machine learning. Deep learning is inspired by the structure of the human brain and involves artificial neural networks with multiple layers. These layers give depth to the learning process. Unlike many traditional machine learning algorithms, deep learning models can automatically discover the relevant features within raw data for specific tasks. This removes the reliance on hand-engineered features. Deep learning especially shines when working with highly complex and unstructured data like images, videos, audios, and natural language. Now, the supervised learning version of deep learning would still have data and labels, but in this case, the data could be images, which wouldn't be that neatly organized data that we had before. However, the labels would be very similar. Imagine you work at an animal shelter and want to automate a system to categorize incoming images of animals. Here is how supervised deep learning can help. Say you have thousands of pictures of cats and dogs, which is our unstructured data, and you would want a diverse set of images, including different breeds, sizes, colors, and poses to make the model robust. So you'll probably have a label, wherein each image would meticulously be labeled as cat or dog. This is crucial for supervised learning. So when it comes to training the model, we might resize images for consistency and adjust color balance for better uniformity. We design a convolutional neural network or CNN architecture CNS are basically powerful type of deep learning architecture designed with a focus on image related tasks. More on them in my future videos. So the labeled cat and dog images are fed into the CNN. 
In the first years, the CNN might learn to recognize edges, shapes, and basic patterns. As we go deeper, it starts identifying more complex features like eyes, ears, and specific fur textures. And finally, we have back propagation. This is where the magic happens. The CNN makes initial predictions on the images. We compare these predictions to the actual labels such as cat or dog. If there are errors, the model adjusts its internal weights and biases to improve its accuracy. This process of back propagation iterates for many epochs or full cycles through the data until the model achieves a good level of accuracy in distinguishing between cats from dogs. Supervised learning excels when you have label data. But what if you don't? That is where unsupervised learning comes in. It allows you to uncover hidden patterns and structures within your data, all without predefined labels. Imagine you work for a music streaming service. You have a massive data set of songs listened by the users. But you lack information on the genres because you don't have any labels. And here is how unsupervised learning can help. So say you have the data, that is you have information about each song listen, such as user ID, the song title, artist, and how much of the song was placed, etc. But you don't have any predefined labels or categories like rock, pop, or country associated with the song. So we can use an unsupervised learning algorithm like k-means clustering, where we can analyze the songs based on various features such as tempo, rhythm, instrumentation, etc. It will then group similar songs together creating clusters. And like I said, this is an introduction video, so don't worry about the algorithms or what k-means clustering mean. We'll deep dive into each of them and break them down for you in a detailed manner. So once the clustering is complete, you can explore the songs within each cluster. For instance, one cluster might have fast tempos, heavy guitar riffs, and drumming, suggesting a rock genre. Or another cluster might have slower tempos, simpler melodies, and prominent vocals, potentially implying a pop music. The main benefits of unsupervised learning is the discovery and exploration part. You can identify hidden patterns and group data points based on similarities you might not have anticipated. So in this example, you discovered potential music genre clusters without needing to predefine labels. In fact, Unsupervised learning can be a valuable first step for supervised learning task. You can use clustering to identify groups within your data and potentially improve the performance of supervised models later. Techniques like principal component analysis or PCA can reduce the complexity of high dimensional data, making it easier to visualize and analyze. Now, the important thing to consider about supervised learning is choosing the right algorithm. There are various unsupervised learning algorithms each suited for different tasks. Choosing the right one depends on your data and goals. Unsupervised learning won't give you definitive labels like rock or pop, so you will need to analyze the clusters and potentially use your domain knowledge to interpret their meaning. All right, next up, we are going to talk about recommendations. So let's say that we are browsing YouTube and there just happens to be potentially hundreds of videos that the service would like to recommend to you to watch next. Well, YouTube job is to take all of these potentially hundreds of videos that are related or what they think you will like compared to what you are watching now and select just a single video with some recommendation model to automatically play next. This is one of the core idea behind recommendations. And this leads to into our final topic of ranking. So let's say that we want to open up the TikTok app. Well, there are literally millions if not billions of TikToks out there. So how does TikTok know which TikTok to put in your feed when you open the app? Well, first they should narrow down to let's say a hundreds or so, and then they can use a ranking model to select the first, second, and third TikTok that you'll be viewing as you scroll through your feed. The goal here would be to keep you scrolling for as long as possible. So the idea is to approximately rank these TikToks to keep you on the platform. All right, so those are going to be the topics that we'll be covering in our machine learning crash course. 